Okay, I know a number of students have been having difficulty with essentially trying to write through their themes and the way in which I've been asking you to write. So I wanted to provide a couple of examples from one of your fellow students. So this here is the beginning of a section uh, that they have about generalization. Uh, so this is my first example here. So if you look the ability to generalize learned behaviors is particularly important as it allows ch the child to transfer and apply the taught skills to everyday life. So that's going to be my topic sentence. So I'm looking to see that this student has supported the this particular statement or this idea using multiple pieces of evidence in the remainder of this paragraph. So one of the things I'm looking at in particular is, A, is there multiple pieces of evidence? Well, I see Cooper here. I see Duffy and Healy here. I see Stokes and Baker here. So there's multiple pieces of evidence. So the next thing I'm going to look at is, are they talking about this idea of the ability to generalize learned behaviors is particularly important as it allows the child to transfer and apply the taught skills of everyday life? So they begin with basically a little definition of uh, generalization uh, so that the reader has a, a sense as to what it is. And then they have another sentence here, which actually comes from Cooper as well. So both of these sentences are coming from Cooper here. But you know, you've got your definition of what generalization is. And then basically that they're saying without generalization, the child may only respond appropriately when prompted. Um, so then you look at the, the next sentence. If speech generalization does not occur, the child might not have access to the reinforcement that comes along with language gains outside of session time. Um, so again, that looks at this idea of transfer and apply the taught skills to everyday life. So what they're saying there is that, you know, it, it might, if, if they don't have generalization, that it impacts negatively upon uh, the taught skills to everyday life. Uh, and you'll notice again, what they've done is they've got a couple of sentences about this particular citation. Um, so based upon this relevance, it's crucial that language programs incorporate generalization techniques. So talking about the importance of doing this, um, which gets back to the first part of the topic sentence here. Uh, moving on, variables known to facilitate generalization per Stokes and Bear were, and then they've got a quote here. Um, so here are some of the variables that facilitate generalization which would, I imagine, be telling me about the transfer and apply aspect of uh, this uh, particular topic. And then they finish with a summary sentence or transition sentence. So to increase the chances of durable treatments, gains that generalize, or sorry, to increase chances of durable treatment gains that generalize easily, uh, variables known to facilitate generalization should be programmed throughout the language intervention. Right. So now the question you ask yourself, does that summarize what they've been talking about there or touch on what they've been talking about there, but also hint to what's coming next? So I've included the topic sentence from the next paragraph so you could see what's coming next. So foundational components of naturalistic teaching strategies are also components that promote generalization. So now they're talking about strategies that you want to use to promote generalization, uh, which my guess is, is another way of saying variables known to facilitate generalization and why they should be programmed throughout language intervention. So you can see how they're tying the two concepts together. Here's another example. So here's the summary slash transition sentence from the previous paragraph. Um, so this is in another section of this particular student's uh, document. So the summary of transition sentence in the previous paragraph is teaching children in their natural environments with familiar people and multiple exemplars can also help promote language generalization leading to spontaneous speech among multiple environments and people. So apparently this area here was, or this previous paragraph was at least about generalization still. It may have also been about spontaneous speech. Um, I, we don't know from what I've copied and pasted here, but if you look at the topic sentence for the next paragraph, both generalization and spontaneity are broad goals for an effective and successful language intervention program. And both concepts should specifically 
be specifically programmed and planned for. Right, so you can see the connection between the preceding paragraph and this paragraph. So again, now looking to see, we've got a couple of sentences that uh, are about Kaiser and Roberts. We've got another sentence here where Duffy and Healy, who are building upon what Kaiser and Roberts talked about. Uh, so by the looks of it, there's um, three sentences about what they've got to say. Sorry, four sentences about what they've got to say. So all that there is about Duffy and Healy. And then we've got a transition or summary sentence. So let's take a look again. In, so remembering that both generalization and spontaneity are broad goals for a successful and effective language program. And they should, both of these ideas should be specifically programmed and planned for. So Kaiser and Roberts stated the ultimate standard for an effective language intervention program is how much the child's everyday social functioning is improved. Um, they further stated that benchmarks for intervention outcomes should include acquisition, generalization, and language growth for specific interventions. Similarly, so to me, that does, you know, I'm, I'm a lay person for your field, but as I read through that, to me, that is on topic for this particular sentence. If I look at this next one, so... Um, these guys here who built upon Kaiser and Roberts' idea of social functioning is a benchmark describing spontaneous speech as a program goal um, and the necessity for individuals with ASD to be viewed as independent and socially competent during social interactions. So while Kaiser and Roberts, at least the way in which they used it, seem to be focusing more upon the generalization aspect, Kaiser and, or sorry, Duffy and Healy seem to be focusing more upon the spontaneous aspect and its importance for an effective and successful program and why it should be specifically programmed and planned for. And if you look at this next sentence, you know, next sentence, they include both of them. You know, spontaneity and generalization both aim to use treatment gains outside of trained environments, but differ based on their definitions. And then they go back to generalization again. And another specific sentence about spontaneity and, you know, the specific types of um, things that you could plan for. And then you can see that this is the final paragraph in this section. Um, so when they have their summary or transition sentence, as sense, sorry, as such, spontaneous language cannot be achieved without generalization, making both aspects critical for many independent and social interactions and activities. Right? So again, that ties very closely to the topic sentence. So I can get down here and each of these pieces of evidence were used in a way that was thematically consistent with the topic sentence. And the summary sentence here is also thematically consistent with the topic sentence. So let's move to another one here now. And I was able to, in this instance, actually get a full section that I have here. So I'm only going to go over the first paragraph or so, but I will send everyone this Word document so that you've got the full example here so you can see how this is set up. Um, so this is a subsection entitled Lag Schedules and Nonverbal Behavior. So if you look at the topic sentence, in addition to being effective with vocal and motor behaviors, which I assume was what they were talking about in the previous subsection, uh, the use of a lag schedule as a type of reinforcement can be implemented to increase response variability with other nonverbal behaviors such as food consumption. So what I'm looking to see here is essentially a series of sentences or a series of evidence, if you will, um, that look at whether or not leg schedules or how leg schedules can be used as a reinforcement to increase response variability with nonverbal behaviors. So again, looking at it just from a cursory perspective, I've got Silba and Fel Kamada here. And I've got Silba et al. here. So I've got multiple pieces of evidence. And you can see uh, what this student has done. And just so you know, this longer example here is a different student than the two examples above, which were uh, student A, if you will. And then this is student B. So in this case, student B uh, has, by the looks of it, one sentence, sorry, two sentences on this particular one. And then they've got one, two, 
three, four sentences on this one. So if we look at the first example then, as one illustration, these guys examine the effects. So you notice that they said they examine the effects of lag schedule and variability of food consumption with children diagnosed with ASD. So they're basically providing a little bit of context here, which you notice weren't done in the previous examples, but it's a good illustration here of providing some context. And again, it's not that you have to do that kind of thing every time you use a piece of literature, but if you scatter them throughout where you provide some context to the reader or you provide an evaluation of what um, you know, the, the study was about or, you know, an evaluation of the quality of the study. Those types of things help the reader. So, but these guys examine the effect of leg schedules on variability of food consumption in children diagnosed with ASD. So by the sounds of it, this study is very much in line with what they've talked about in the, um, in the topic sentence. And specifically, let's see, they want to increase response variability. That's sort of the key thing that they're trying to prove, if you will. Um, so they found higher levels of variability in food consumption in the lag one condition. So that, again, ties back directly to their topic sentence. And then they uh, put the uh, specific finding in a little bit of context for us here. And you can see next, they say, later in a study, such and such evaluated, so again, providing us with a little bit more context. In fact, if you look at both of these, what you find is that they begin by providing with some context and then talk about the finding and then contextualize the finding. If you look at this one, this whole first sentence is a little bit of context about the study. Um, and let's see some more context. About, so the first two sentences here are context about the study. And then results showed that varying consumption of foods by participants was negatively reinforced by avoidance of response blocking, thereby demonstrating that lag schedules can be established with response blocking to address invariance in food consumption. So again, bringing it back to, you know, the results are directly tied to what was in the topic sentence. Um, and then they say in both studies, leg schedules, so if you weren't uh, sort of following along and weren't making the inferences that the author has put in there, they make it a very explicit way in both studies. And in fact, they could have cited both studies at the end of this sentence if they'd wanted to. Um, in both studies, leg schedules were effective in treating invariance in the consumption of food. And then they've got the summary or transition sentence. This exemplifies that lag schedules can increase response variability. So in this case, it was a summary sentence. It's not pointing to what's coming next. It's basically just summarizing essentially what they had to say about this particular point here. So you can see, and if you look through the rest of this example, I think what you'll find is you'll find a specific topic sentence followed by multiple examples. In some cases, the student provides some context. In other cases, they don't, and that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, as long as you're trying to do it some of the times, you're moving beyond just summarizing the literature. That's really what we're looking for here as we go through this. Uh, and then ending with a nice summary sentence or with a sentence that... Um, essentially, uh, you know, transitions between what you were just talking about and what is coming up next. So hopefully this video, along with the sample that I'll be sending out here, will be useful to you as you are working through your own writing in a concrete kind of way.